Today is um, Thursday the 19th of March and I'm in London. I can't get to my studio in Brighton, but I'm lucky enough to have a place here where I can work and draw and write and communicate at this strange time. The Garzoni Challenge, starting off two months ago when Linda from Florence Advancing Women Artists contacted me and Althea telling us about the exhibition that was due to open at the Uffizi, about Giovanna Garzoni, the painter renowned for her still lives during her lifetime, which was 1600 and 1670, to 1670, a favourite of the Medici and whose work I already knew and loved and showed to my students in my art classes at Berg House in Hampstead. The exhibition that was due to open at the Uffizi um, was, had the title, or has the title, The Greatness of the Universe in the Art of Giovanna Garzoni, where the idea was, as far as um, I could understand from the information that we were given, that um, Garzoni, although she didn't travel widely, certainly not beyond Italy, brought into her exquisitely painted paintings um, the objects that were coming to Italy and to Florence in particular, be they fruit and vegetables, um, China from China, uh, objects that were, and, and um, plants that were found in the new worlds that were being discovered. In fact, the Medici, Cosimo dei Medici, I can't remember which one of the Cosimos, um, financed expeditions to bring back seeds and plants and particularly citrus fruit of every type um, back to Florence where he grew them in his limonaia, what in English we call orangery, but in Italian is a limonaia. And I've seen in the various villas, the Medici villas around Florence, some of these exotic and actually strange hybrid fruit, which are not lemons and not grapefruit and not orange, but combinations, strange shapes. So not only did they grow them or were fascinated by them, but they commissioned artists to paint them. And um, I've visited the museum at the Villa of Poggio e Cagliano, where many of these paintings are hung. They were catalogued, they were hung. Anyway, back to the Garzoni challenge. The exhibition was due to open, I say was now, because in fact it didn't open last Tuesday, um, 11th of March. Yes, it was the 11th of March. At the Uffizi and has been postponed and who knows now. But the challenge um, issued by the Uffizi together with Advancing Women Artists and um, the Medici Archive Project was to involve both institutions and artists everywhere um, to take Garzoni's work as a starting point un punto di riferimento, un punto di partenza, as we would say in Italian, to discuss, to think about, to actually bring past and present together and think not just about the still life genre, I think, but for me it was also the implications of what we were doing when we um, painted or thought about what in Italian, Greek, French is natura morta, Nature morte, necrifici. In English, it is still life, but as one of my students said when we were painting some flowers the other week, oh, that flower just moved. There's nothing still necessarily about still life, and there are a lot of things that I would have liked to discuss with others at a time when we might have been in the same room to discuss things um, about these concepts of stillness and the stories and the histories behind objects. Anyway, in preparation for the Garzoni challenge, when I was still able to move around and to organize things, with Frankie in Brighton, we were due today 
uh, to collaborate. Well, actually, no, it was Frankie's idea, um, and she was hosting in her studio at New England House um, uh, an event where a group would collaborate on a stitched still life or crocheted still life, taking um, Galzoni's wonderful works as a, um, as a starting point. And I was going to come along and talk about the Galzoni Challenge, about advancing women artists and its work. We were going to look at a four minute trailer, um, which hasn't materialized because events have taken over. The other event that we had planned, and I hope that you'll all be able to listen to what I'm saying now, because I think that we can go beyond what we what we had hoped to do, I don't know. We have to find new ways of communicating anyway and of continuing. So the other event, um, which Althea was organising at the Women's Art Library, part of the special collections at Goldsmiths College in London, which was due to take place next Tuesday, 24th of March, was involving Flick Allen and Sarah Ken, two artists, contemporary artists whom I don't know, haven't met, We've had a sort of brief communication, but they were going to show their work. I was again going to introduce um, the afternoon. It was going to be a three hour um, seminar or whatever one would call it, open to all. And they, I think Flick was going to bring in exotic um, fruits that people could handle. I don't really want to say what they were going to do because I don't actually know what it was going to be, but that's also the interest and the excitement to then start from somewhere and see where it would take us, like taking a line for a walk, but this is taking a discussion for a walk. Um, and I personally had hoped also to give the possibility of a still life to people who might want to draw as they listened or to draw because it's something that I've always done sitting through lectures at universities and anywhere else um, to keep myself going as indeed I am now. So I say all of that, that was due to happen. Um, I'm not sure if I've got battery to go on recording um, now but I'll be very quick. Now the Galzoni challenge has for me gathered poignancy and impetus, urgency and relevance and has become something far wider. I initiated a challenge with a little, uh, to a little boy in Rome last week when I was thinking of him holed up at home, unable to go out, a little eight-year-old boy called Marcos, to do, a, to do an exchange of drawings. So I sent him, first of all, where was the first? I'd been thinking about the Gazzoni Challenge, stories and histories about the history behind a particular object. And in Brighton, I had actually done this painting, which brings together an Ethiopian coffee pot. Basically, objects, souvenirs, both from my travels, but also from people around the world, Ethiopia, Japan, this printed indigo fabric, this glass from Florence, some spring flowers, and thought about how still lives can bring together so many people, so many worlds. This is from Colombia. Um, so I sent that to Marcos. A while later, he sent me his flowering sky because he couldn't go out, but he could see flowers and sky from his garden in Rome. So by that time I was in um, London and in my kitchen in London and I painted this for Marcos, my flowering kitchen. So flowers I'd picked, the spring goes on despite everything, and the kitchen sink and the garden beyond. So that's what I sent Marcos. He then sent me his Ophelia because apparently they discussed Ophelia with his mother and he changed her ending to a living Ophelia and I felt I didn't have that much time but I felt I had to respond so I did my Ophelia thinking about and which actually sent me back to Shakespeare and those beautiful lines of Gertrude's as she describes Ophelia's end there is a willow grows a slant a brook um, so uh, there I was looking at Shakespeare 
and also at Millet's painting because um, Marcos's mother, Francesca, said Marcos also knows Millet's painting. I mean, surprising <laughs> what this little boy knows. So I've got this correspondence with him. Meanwhile, in my art class, I had done this. I had set up a composition uh, so I could run a class at home and brought together different objects, thinking of Gazzoni. So this is a, a head of Apollo from Athens, which was the city where I was born, like a guardian god. This was a shell that came from one of my journeys. I'm thinking of Gazzoni, tangerines, a piece of coral. She brought together disparate objects, and that was another point of interest. I also found, I mean, most of the books that I thought were relevant were actually in my studio in Brighton, but then I found I had this book, Florentine's A Tuscan Feast, and I talked about it on the phone with Althea, and it's wonderful what you really discover as you look at what you've had and maybe have forgotten or never really looked at properly. But it's a beautiful book about, well, which il has illustrations of Galzoni's, uh, the illustrations to the book rather are Galzoni's paintings. But next to them are wonderful recipes, which I think I will have to try out, um, collected by a 17th century Italian writer. They've been transcribed by Lorenza de' Medici in the 1990s when this book was published. Uh, she's a descendant of the Medici. So there we have it. There was this book, I was talking to Althea about it, and then later to Frankie, and I found and he's in Brighton on the phone. And I found that Frankie does have the book. So that was another sort of thing that brought us together, even though we can't be together. So um, that's here. Meanwhile, I've also been reading Steinbeck. I picked this up. This was from my son, Marco, had it at school in Florence when they were doing um, English. Because it's his, his name is written neatly. <laughs> um, there on the fly leaf. And there's a beautiful passage which actually describes what we're living through now, and I've wanted to read it out at one stage. Um, why? Because I find solace in words, I find solace in feeling that we're all going through the same thing now in this strange time, and somehow it's bringing us together. So I read this the other day, and then I thought I'd like to read it out to people. There's one line that sprang out, but I'm going to read the whole section. The line that probably stood out for me was, It is a time of great peace, a deserted time, a little era of rest. Early morning is a time of magic in Canary Row. In the grey time, after the light has come and before the sun has risen, the rose seems to hang suspended out of time in a silvery light. The street lights go out and the weeds are a brilliant green. The corrugated iron of the canneries glows with the pearly lucence of platinum or old pewter. No automobiles are running then. The street is silent of progress and business and the rush and drag of the waves can be heard as they splash in among the piles of the canneries. It is a time of great peace. A deserted time. A little era of rest. Well, the morning that I actually read those lines was early morning and I felt that, I don't know, depending on our mood of the moment, whether we'll think of it as peace or rest, but it's important to hold on to these moments. Today I went for a walk nearby, thinking about what I would draw for Marco, but also thinking about Ophelia's willow, the willow, a slant of rook, and I drew this on the heath, the willow tree in all its spring glory, all those fresh electric yellow leaves, and thought how spring continues regardless. <laughs>